guys, it's Cam Sports. Last night, a couple of buddies and I got together and we got Wingstop and we sat down and we proceeded to watch a murder on live television. Georgia won the national championship 65-7 to over TCU. It's the largest point differential ever, 58 points. Georgia was picked 13 and a half, I believe it was, and this is the uh, second highest spread in uh, college football championship history. But yeah, this one just got ugly quick. It was 10 to nothing Georgia, and then 10 to seven. Uh, Max Duggan scored a rushing touchdown and made it 10 to seven. And you could tell by the way things were going that it was looking like it was going to be Georgia's night. Uh, so I was just thinking maybe if TCU can make it a two touchdown game in the fourth quarter or something, going into the fourth quarter or something, then um, that would be reasonable at least. But I didn't expect this, and most people probably didn't either. But, yeah, so we got 38-7 to at halftime. And they scored the opening touchdown, made it 45-7. to And so I was like, man, I, I just don't even need to watch the rest of this game. This is insane. So I almost went to bed, and then I remembered that uh, Pat McAfee had a broadcast going on on the sidelines with his – uh, crew and everything and I turned on there I turned it on and watched them the second half and it got me through it man they are funny they are funny um funny guys all of those and um but yeah so I watched them and they got me through it got me through to the celebration where I could see Kirby Smart and Stetson Bennett celebrate and everything so that was that was really cool uh, my original plan for this video was to uh, analyze and break down what happened um, in this game, but there's nothing to break down. There's nothing to analyze. Georgia was just a better team in all aspects of this game, offense, defense, special teams, anything. They were just a better team, and they, show, they showed it. They were dominant. Uh, Stetson Bennett had four touchdowns, 304 yards. Uh, he comes up big in big games, clutch and big moments. Georgia had 254 rushing yards as a team. And five touchdowns to go along with that. Uh, but their uh, lead back, McIntosh, had 50 yards. Uh, but they didn't need him to do anything more than that. They were they were fine. Uh, Brock Bowers, probably the nation's best tight end, uh, had 152 yards and a touchdown. And it's so, so exciting. We get to see him um, for another year, hopefully, uh, next season, uh, if, I don't, if I'm not mistaken about that. Uh, but, yeah, Ladd McConkey also added two touchdowns. Darnell Washington, the huge tight end that they have. Um, their tight end room is just ridiculous. But he only had 28 yards tonight. In fact, the only time I remember hearing his name was a flag on him. But just him being on the field, his presence is felt. Uh, A.D. Mitchell, I've been hearing a lot about him on some talk shows and stuff about how he could come up clutch in this game. And... Nothing to come up clutch with. He didn't. He didn't need to. He didn't need to. But he did have one touchdown. So good for Ad Mitchell. Um, Georgia's defense was everything. Everything we've always said it was. Um, Jalen Carter, Ringo, Nolan Smith. Usually the captain of that defense um, was out, but he was just watching and stuff. And just watching them was so fun. They fly to the football. They're just a fun group to watch. And. Um, uh, yeah, for them to hold Quentin Johnson like they did, a first-round pick as a wide receiver for TCU is just its just amazing. It really is. Um, so, yeah, on the flip side of that, Max Duggan didn't have a great game, as you could probably tell. Um, I really wish Kendra Miller could have played. Um, Quentin Johnson had three yards, which led to Darius Davis, uh, TCU's other wide receiver, having a um, pretty good game in a place of him. But yeah, before this before going into this game, I was thinking I was thinking Kendra Miller um um I wish he was healthy and I wish he could be 100% because that means a lot. And Mercado played good. He played great against Michigan the other day. But um I was just thinking they needed their their uh lead back. But um and on the defensive side, I was thinking D Winters could the captain of that defense could really hold them together and um, be, I don't know, mediocre, I guess, at best. Um, but 
giving up 65 points is it's just insane. Um, but yeah, Kirby Smart, I'm so happy for Kirby Smart. For him to be doubted two years ago, and now he's got two national championships, uh, it's, it's awesome. It really is. For him to be under Nick Saban like that for that many years, and for him to not get over the hump of Nick Saban once he got to Georgia, and to see him do it, to see him win the national championship twice, is it, it really is cool. Um, but Georgia was doubted this season. I personally doubted them. Um, obviously, didn't think they were going to be better than last season. Um, with all those starters going to the draft and everything. But, man, they they proved everybody wrong. They really did. Um, most of the reason that people were picking against them was because of the two weird games they had against mediocre, lackluster competition. With uh, Kent State, they were up 32-22 to 22 in the fourth quarter. Ended up winning by 17-39-22. Then I believe the next week, uh, if I'm not – wrong about that they were playing Missouri in uh, Missouri and they were down 22 to 12 in the fourth quarter and they ended up winning 26 to 22 but just weird games like that it just puts people's minds as to where that team's not good because they um, had to be in a dog fight with these two teams and it's just a weird way of thinking you get at Georgia and at most Top tier places, you get everybody's best every week. So you just got to shake some of that stuff off when you think about predictions and everything like that. Um, but but yeah, Georgia comes up big, man. And all the big games that they have, uh, Stetson Bennett as well comes up big in big games. Uh, for Oregon, started off with Oregon week one, 49 to three. We all remember how that went. I was super excited for that game, and then it turned out to be that. Um, didn't have another big test until Tennessee, when Tennessee came to Georgia, number one versus number two, um, and Georgia just dominated, 27-6, to six, um, all the way up until about five minutes left, and Tennessee scored, made it 27-13. to 13. Uh, Next big test was the SEC Championship, when they got a tough LSU team coming off a loss to Texas A&M. Um, which kind of sucked the life out of that SEC championship game. But um, to win that 50-30. to 30. And then last week they got their uh, toughest scare of the season. And uh, in Ohio State, Ohio State was up 38-24, to 24, I believe it was, in the fourth quarter. And Georgia ended up winning 42-41 to 41 on Stetson Bennett's arm in the last minute or so. They scored a touchdown and then – we all saw that field goal that Ohio State missed. But, but yeah, just, just awesome for Georgia. So happy for Georgia. Um, I believe they will be, be in this type of atmosphere for a long ways now. All the recruits, all the transfers they're getting, it's, it's going to be Georgia's time for a little bit. David Pollock said last night uh, in Nick Saban's face that uh, they were becoming a dynasty. They were being a, they were a dynasty and um, – He's right, in my opinion, they are. They are becoming just as um, just as good as anybody. They really are. They can beat anybody any day. Um, got to hold back on some of the Alabama comparisons right now. Alabama's been doing this for 15 years. We got to hold back on that. But, man, Georgia deserves every amount of respect you can give to a team right now. Um, on the other side, you got TCU, who should not be ashamed of this whatsoever. Obviously, 65-7 to is not what their plans were for this game, um, even if they lost just 65-7. to It just just makes even their season, how good of a season they had this year, kind of kind of look pedestrian or um, just makes it look um, less than it was. And we shouldn't look at it that way at all. They proved their way to be here. And just a bad, bad night last night. But, yeah, for TCU to have the type of season they had, I remember watching them against Colorado the first week. They were um, up 7-6 to six at halftime. They ended up doing really good in the second half. But Max Duggan wasn't even the starter going into that game. And um, they were up 7-6 to six over – Colorado, we saw how good Colorado became the rest of the season. But, um, um, yeah, and then Max Duggan came in like that. 
and went undefeated throughout the regular season, only lost to the, to the um, Big 12 champion Kansas State. And um, for them to lose like that, I'm still super glad they got in. For them, I hate calling this a Cinderella season because to me a Cinderella season means that you lucked up and I don't believe that. I don't believe you can look up for 14 weeks and then get to the national title game, and then it shows, but not at all. They proved their way to be here. Had some great wins. The first first great win was, what, Kansas? When Kansas was 5-0, and it was 5-0 and versus 5-0. and That was a fun game. I do remember that. Um, and they beat – they blew out Oklahoma from the first – Five, six minutes, I believe it was over. And um, um, come from behind win against Oklahoma State. I believe they were down – I know they were down 17 at one point, but I believe they were down 34-20 to 20 in the fourth quarter and came back and won in overtime. Uh, then at Kansas State, they were down 28-10 to 10, um, and then winning, winning it 38-28. to 28. Then after that is when they got some big attention after that. And they had the Texas game coming up, and I picked Texas to beat them. I really did. And for their defense to come up that clutch, not give an offensive touchdown to Texas is wild. It really is. Um, won 17 to 10 on that one. And, um, yeah, yeah, had some scares against Baylor. Um, they got the field goal unit out and everything, if, if anybody remembers that game. But – but, yep, and they lost in dramatic, dramatic fashion against Kansas State in the uh, Big 12 championship game. And then, obviously, last week we saw what they did to Michigan, how that started, what a game that was. Man, what a game, What a weekend last week. You know the college football gods had to do something to us uh, last night to make up for last weekend. Last weekend was so good. They, You just knew they had to be a terrible game last night, and that's exactly what it was. But, man, what a great season. Uh, I plan to do a um, a recap on everything on um, this 2022 season because I know I didn't get to a lot in this video, but um, kind of still reflecting on TCU. Uh, also, what Sonny Dykes did this season, first-year head coach for TCU, getting them all this way is just mad amount of respect for Sonny Dykes, huge amount of respect for him. Um but, yeah, I believe that's all I have. Uh, by the way, guys, this is my first YouTube video. I plan to do a few more, a um, few more a week. And I plan to cover college basketball, college football, uh, NFL, and uh, NBA as much as I can. I appreciate you guys.